The famous actor, YouTuber, comedian Russell Brand has recently come to faith in Jesus and been baptised. Yesterday I got baptised and it was an incredible, profound experience and many of you will have had your own experiences of baptism and will therefore know what I'm talking about. This is not the first time that a celebrity has very publicly come to faith. I'm thinking of Kanye West back in 2019 and so it makes me wonder, is it going to last? If you remember 2019, it was a good year. You'll remember that Kanye West started making noise about following Jesus and then he dropped an album called Jesus is King. He started this sort of traveling church roadshow where the gospel was preached and people did actually worship Jesus. He talked a lot about his faith and even made a play where he compared himself to Nebuchadnezzar being humbled by God. It all looked really good and now 2024, I don't even want to put in this video some of the stuff that he's said or done or some of the photos. Now in fairness, there is mental illness there, he's got bipolar, that complicates things and I don't want to weigh in heavily too much on that. But with that in mind, Russell Brand has come to faith. Is this another celebrity who's just going to fall off and do a Kanye and walk away from it all? Let's talk about that. First of all, we got to think, do we even have the right to assess someone else's faith? And I think there's a line that we've got to toe there because on the one hand, we don't actually know, okay? Only God knows someone's faith. Man looks at the outward appearance, God looks at the heart. But at the same time, if you remember whenever Donald Trump supposedly came to faith, everyone was like, he's a Christian now, and there's zero evidence of that. We don't want to be naive, but we also don't want to be cynical. And I think Jesus gives us some principles here for this. He says in Matthew 7, 20, that good trees bear good fruit, bad trees bear bad fruit. You'll know his followers by their fruit. Or in John 15, 8, where he says that whoever remains in him will bear much fruit that people would know that they're actually his disciples. So clearly there is a way of discerning whether or not someone is truly a follower of Jesus and that way is by assessing the fruit of their submission to Jesus, by assessing that fruit in their life. But that's a hard thing to do when we don't actually know someone. I don't know Russell Brand personally, I don't know his character. I'm certainly less positioned and I'd imagine you are less well positioned to see the change in his character compared to people who actually know him. And the people who know him are also, if they're Christians, going to be the people ministering to him. So is he really a Christian? I don't know. Let's assume that he is. Then you got to think, okay, well, is he going to fall off? Because Kanye looked good and then he didn't. So will Russell Brand do the same? And again, I'm not God. I don't know how he's going to end up. It's the same even for people in our own life. Whenever someone comes to faith, you don't know whether that's going to continue through their lives, whether they're going to be like the soil that the weeds choke out or that springs up because they're ground shallow and then the sun scorches it. We don't know. And it can be easy to curb our enthusiasm so that we're not disappointed if that happens. But whenever you harden your heart like that, it makes it really difficult to love because yeah, you harden your heart, you don't feel pain so much, but you also don't feel love. Your heart's not soft towards the people that you're hardening it against. So that is an action that puts yourself first and tries to avoid your own disappointment rather than putting the other person first, which is obviously not the Christian way. And I think off the back of that, Cynicism doesn't reflect God's heart for whenever people come to faith. If you read the parable of the lost son, the lost sheep, the lost coin, whenever the thing that was lost is found, there's rejoicing. The widow doesn't say, oh, I found my coin, but I might end up losing it anyway, so let's not get too excited. No, there's a huge party. It's a celebration. And so if we are not reflecting that attitude, then we're out of step with how God is feeling about that particular scenario, which again, isn't good. Fourth thing is that my job isn't to judge and assess whether or not someone's actually a Christian. My job is to encourage them and to pray for them. So many of your comments have been so beautiful and encouraging and I really appreciate it. And also even the cynicism I understand because some people will just see me as a celebrity. Have a look at what Hebrews 4 says here. It's really interesting. It says, see to it brothers and sisters that none of you has a sinful unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. So it's saying, don't turn away from God. Don't lose your faith. Here is the antidote for that. It says, encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. One of the best ways to prevent people from turning away from God is to encourage them. Not to call them out and be like, you need to stop swearing, you need to stop doing this. Encourage them. Fifth point, Russell Brand, yeah, is a celebrity, but first and foremost, he's a person. Here it is in his own words, this is really good. Some people will just see me as a celebrity. I don't see me as a celebrity because I was me when I was a little boy. I was me when I was a junkie. I was me when I was poor. I've been me in all of the different phases. Celebrities aren't a sort of special brand of person that need a different sort of Jesus or no, they're just like you. They're just like me. 
they need Jesus and Jesus is freely available to them. Jesus says in John 6 37, whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. Now, in fairness, the celebrity lifestyle probably makes it a bit harder to follow Jesus. You've got all of the access to access and vices. And Jesus does say that it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. But then he also says, with God, all things are possible. Sixth point then is that sanctification is a process. I've been following Jesus for a long time. You maybe have too. And so Russell Brand might not be as sanctified as either of us. He might not have the same Christian language that we have. The way that he talks about it feels a little bit weird to me, actually. Christianity and in particular, the figure of Christ are, it seems to me, inevitably becoming more important as I become more familiar with suffering, purpose, self, and not self. The type of Christianity that excites me is the idea that we can, through surrendering ourselves, become conduits for a great power. But whenever I first came to faith, I still had a lot to learn. Whenever you first came to faith, you probably did too. This is new for me, I'm learning, and I will make mistakes, but this is my path now. And I already feel incredibly blessed, relieved, nourished, held. We gotta give Russell Brand time to grow and to become more like Jesus. Now, if he does walk away, here's hoping and praying that he doesn't, but if he does, God has used him. He's put a big spotlight on Jesus to a lot of people who might never have thought about him before. God has clearly moved in his life and it will advance his kingdom in much the same way that God used Kanye. And I actually think in a lot of ways, God is still using Kanye to teach us about Jesus, but I'll save that for this video here. So you can check that out soon. Thanks for being here and God bless. Thank you so much for your support. Let's keep doing this together or certainly I'm just gonna do what I'm doing. I love you so much. I'm so grateful to be surrendered in Christ.